Hello guys, my name is Elizabeth Eibe and of course you're welcome to Behind the Brand. It is a beautiful and sunny day today out here in Lagos and we are bringing you something that enables comfort while letting you be stylish. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Behind the Brand. As you know, Nigeria is a growing economy and that comes with a lot of businesses and brands, upcoming and of course more established ones. Today, we're talking to Alternate Culture, a brand that employs Nigerian and African fabrics in the making of their products. We're going to be learning about their products, the making, the process, the materials that they use for their products. I'm so pumped guys because I mean it is African, it is our own. Let's go guys. My given names are Adidayo, Mudupe Fagbulu. Um, I'm in my 50s and uh, I studied uh, industrial design at Amadu Belo, fine arts in the University of Ife. I have uh, an MBA in information technology and I'm currently studying for a doctorate at the Liverpool University in business. Um, I'm married. My background is basically design and business uh, because my work spans over a broad range of uh, design elements and also in the problem solving aspect of management in the business fields. For starters, um, as, as, you, as you study, you, you find out that uh, all forms of study have now become interrelated. At the lower levels, uh, you talk about specializations, um, but as you, you move higher, you find out that everything is interrelated. I mean, for, for a design business to succeed, it must have some form of resilience and a strong backing of business strategy to make it work. Of course, the Bible says that time and chance happen to all men. But basically, you find that everything in life is interrelated. Designs, sciences, technology, uh, business strategy, um, anything you might possibly think of. And when you start getting to the higher levels of, you know, study, you find that you have to relate them to one another because it's unavoidable. Um, why does one business survive as opposed to the other? What technologies are going to evolve to determine the future of whatever business you're into? Whether you like it or not, we're stuck in a world where business, design, engineering, and technology have become interrelated. So, as I moved along, I was interested basically in applying art or the creative aspects of art to engineering and to solving problems that evolve around these lifestyles or these methodologies or these manufacturing processes. And that's what brought me to the point where I studied industrial design, which is a cross between engineering and the arts. I studied art in itself as in fine art in its raw state. I studied information technology to look at the, the forms of managing and you know, you know, pushing the realms of design. And I'm currently studying for a doctorate to solve the problems of small and medium scale industries basically in a rather awkward you know, business environment. And that's how I, I've spanned the whole processes that I will talk about. What I do is, is not that straightforward in terms of interpretation, but I, I could start off from the perspective that, I, like I said, 
My firms, the firms I manage, there are two of them. One is the Workhouse Design Group and one is Alternate Culture. The Workhouse Design Group basically is exactly what it says it is. It's a, a design firm that supports the construction industry. Basically, um, we manufacture components and attachments to buildings or anything that enhances the architectural industry. Um, they call us in to solve design problems or they call us in to fabricate and manufacture components for the design industry. That's one aspect of what I do. The other aspect of what I do is design on the clothing level. We design clothing, we design bags, we, we create solutions at the other end of the design industry, the fabric, uh, colors, solutions for particular you know, needy industries. That's the other end of what we do. Now the third end of what I do goes into the business management of these processes. Um, it is said theoretically that 70% of human endeavor ends up in failure. There are two forms of failure. There is partial failure and there's critical failure. You know, that means that basically 70% of our undertakings will fail. The other aspect of what I do, which I'm studying for currently, is to look into industries of the design nature, of the manufacturing nature, of the production nature, small-scale industries, medium-scale industries, subsistent industries, to determine how they can create resilience to survive. So, I have combined all aspects of design, manufacture, and consultancy. And that's what my firms basically do. We combine that which is practice to solve problems that will take us into the future. Uh, we call it um, resilience design, okay? Um, and the object in itself is sustainability. How will industries within the Nigerian sphere and around the Nigerian sphere sustain themselves over a long period of time? It's important that I add that the average industry around the world survives for a maximum of 40 years. That's the average. So our job is with the understanding that we have in all these fields, project policy, develop strategy that will take the average industry beyond the 40 year period. How do you hand over to your children, your grandchildren, or how do you sell to a third party who will continue. All these strategies combined into a, the practice of design that we have is what we do. Alternate Culture was um, initiated by um, some other person, some third party. Her name is uh, Jumoke Omolulu. And basically she walked up to me one day and said, look, with all your design experience, with all your um, you know, design knowledge, don't you think there is a need to interpret these things at the other levels where people can afford to actually buy them or see them. I mean, she was the one that initiated the whole thing and we registered the company about three years ago and we started business. Basically what we do in the alternate uh, culture is we design clothing, bags, I mean, anything that is utilitarian within the sphere of design, fabric, leather, you know, we design these things for client-specific jobs and for the open market. Um, we, we've had clients like South African Tourism, the, the Export Promotion Council of Nigeria, um, and a host of others, basically, who contract us to look into their design needs and manufacture for them for specific purposes. Conferences and uh, exhibitions. Yes, we've had uh, other institutions like uh, the Market for Africa who have contracted us to design specific products which are sold online in their own markets. So basically that's what Alternate Culture does. There are two aspects to this thing. One is, we're going to take it from the 
the perspective of fabric. Um, of course, you know, uh, the major fabrics that belong to the African genre is based, we have dyed fabrics and we have woven fabrics and we have the combination of the two. Now, basically what we do is we look at fabric from the position of woven and the position of dyed fabric to determine what exactly the client's needs are. Now, when it comes to strength, we tend to look at woven fabric most of the time. Um, the weaves, of course, you know, African weaves, Ashoke, and the different kinds of fabric that we have are either plain weaves or they're twill derivatives or they're twill weaves. Um, so what, what we do is we, we look at the needs of the client and how we can satisfy them in terms of, you know, what, what are they trying to project in terms of moods, in terms of, and we try and inculcate that which is indigenous to us, because that's, that's our mainstay. That's why it's called an alternate culture. We are looking at the cultures that we have within our sphere, we're exploring them, and we're projecting them in design terms. So, so far we have Asho Kays, the woven things, and we have Adire, and Ankara, and Batik, which is a, uh, 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 well, adire oni oni eleko, and we call them wax resists in English. I don't know what it's called in Yoruba, but basically that's what we do. Now. When it comes to design, the, the, the approach is, it's, it's a bit complex and a bit, it's a bit simple. Every design person comes with what you call a bias. That means you have a leaning. You lean towards certain things that you give preferences to. Um, there's also something we call an ontological perspective to design. That means the way you see life. Do you see life from a constructive perspective? Do you see life from positive, from postmodernism? There's an approach that we all take to design. Now for us, I like to refer to our approach as being minimalistic. We do the barest minimum. That's the best way to put it, you know, without, you know, going too technical. We try and approach design from a Simple perspective. We don't make it complex. We reduce them to the basics. Um, now, I'm a major influence on how design works in the team. And for me, I'm a linear thinker. I, I think in terms of lines. Um, I am also, like I said, a minimalist in terms of thought. I like keeping things pretty simple. And I'm what you call... Uh, a gender-free design person. That means I ignore color as being feminine or masculine. I, I, I ignore shapes as being masculine or feminine. I think everybody can use anything in terms of shape, color or design. It just depends on how you use it. So I am the major influence in that department. I think men can wear red. It depends on how it's used. What shade of red is it? dark? Is it light? Is it toned? It's basically how you combine these things to derive what you want. So that's our design approach. And I'm the major influence, like I said. Now we have other contributing designers. Uh, some of them live abroad. I have my friend Frances, uh, Frances Peters. She lives in France. I have, you know, people all over the world. I have friends who have designed the initial products that we work with at um, uh, Wale Lagunju, who was, you know, an international artist now, but he's been a major influence on the approaches we use to design. And I consult all these people, you know, at intervals to keep in line with, you know, whatever thoughts we have. And that's basically how design is taken from our own perspective. It's a bit intellectual, 
you know, it's a bit intellectual, but we keep it as basic as possible. We already know what the processes are, the, the, the traditional processes for making fabric. We already know them. Um, we know what we want at any particular moment in time. All we do is we look at individuals outside that have excelled in what they do. And we outsource to them, giving them our own briefs also. You know, like you could say, look, uh, we want fabric. We want a range of fabric, woven fabric, that has the following qualities. We want one to be green and blue. We want one to be uh, green and uh, black. We want one to be green and yellow. So we can create a range of products to meet our needs. We outsource. And because they're good at what they do, they deliver to us what we want. We vet it and we continue with our design work. These are just uh, neck pillows, travel pillows. And um, we follow a, a, a basic thing, like I told you, it's always minimalist. And you know, we follow a, a consistent procedure in getting the designs. There's always one form of contrast or the other, either contrast in the labels, contrast in the, in the zipper holders and the tie holders. And it's consistent in all our designs. You can see the contrast, the labels. Um, of course, uh, standard procedure, we make the patterns for these things. Um, we cut them out, either manually or with a scissors, or an electronic scissors, any one of the two. Um, we cut out the inner linings. We cut out the foam layers. And we basically just stitch everything together um, to give us the product. But one thing that is, you know, peculiar about our own product is we either have them in contrasting colors, um, like this, or we have them with contrasting labels. We try to make our product, you know, fun products to generate a bit of excitement as we maintain the African theme. We have beads, on the, on the zippered handles, and uh, I guess that's basically it. A lot of, a lot of Nigerians come to, to, to Africa, and they want to be able to identify with that which is African. Now, the object is, this is a functional item that they can identify with. I mean, this is our largest selling product because people just pick them up casually at the airports. Airlines also buy them from us and have their logos put on them. So basically, because of its function, I mean, it, it brings comfort to people that are traveling either by road, by air. It's one of the products that where people pick up rapidly and it gives them the opportunity to identify with Africa in a functional way. And that's what brought about this product. We, we also have other things that we do. We have books, we have all kinds of other items, utility items that are, are wrapped up in African fabric or have African themes. So the object really is, as much as we're interested in, you know, building a bit of nostalgia with non-functional things or items that might not be required for daily living, we also have a need also to make these items in functional and usable items for daily use. And this is one of the most functional items. It supports neck, your neck when you travel, you know, and it also speaks of who we are as Africans. The fabric is African. The contrast, the design is minimalist, and this is just us. So that's how we arrived at this point. You know, we are meeting a need. And like I said to you, I mean, as every time people travel, you can see them picking, up at the, picking it up at the airports, either as souvenirs or as gifts to other people for their, you know, to show that, you know, I'm just coming back from Nigeria. It's easy to handle. It's a perfect gift. It's functional. I mean, people use them at home when they sleep. They use, them home. they use them when they're traveling. So look, it meets all the criteria of good design. And that's why we came about this. Meeting somebody's needs.
business then was business. Um, I remember when we, we, we were leaving school a couple of years back, I mean, everybody wanted to work in a particular industry or the other. I mean, we had friends working at Exide Batteries. We had, had friends working at uh, uh, STG Glass. We, I worked in a, in a factory called uh, Dolly Fashions and we produced, uh, we produced military cardigans, we produced, uh, um, we produced NYC uniforms, and we were exporting to America, you know, clothing. Um, I had friends, uh, Nui Knits in Ibadan, who manufactured uh, knitwear, which we combined together to produce cardigans for the military, for the police. We had a shop in Lagos called Tops and Bottoms. That was the past of design. It was done properly. I mean, every year we'd sit down, a couple of months of the year, we'd design products, we'd make patterns for them, and we'd manufacture throughout the year. That was what design was in the past. As time went on, these processes were eroded. Everybody became a contractor. I mean, Babangida was giving out contracts, so we, we all stopped working and everybody became a contractor. Then you are either a design contractor, a plumbing contractor, a building contractor. You had a profession. All of a sudden, there were middlemen and everybody became contractors without portfolios. Now, we have joined the African free trade area and this is going to require a lot of competition, a lot of discipline. The future of business in Nigeria whether we like it or not, is getting back to the basics. We're going to have to get down, grind our heels, learn the right processes, and manufacture from scratch. That is the future of business in Nigeria. We have, we have learned by now that it's unsustainable to keep importing products. Um, I mean, you can see the strain on, on the dollar, or sorry, on the Naira. You can see the reaction of CBN to the importation of, you know, unwarranted products. And we know that if we continue along this line, the economy cannot sustain it. We won't be able to have, a, we won't build up foreign reserves. It will shake us. So we have to return to manufacturing. Now that we have a, a, an African free trade zone, where there'll be no duties on products coming in from African countries, evidently, we're also in competition with our neighbors. So it means we're going to have to evolve very stringent processes to compete with these people. And it's taken us to a new sphere where it's back to work. Theory is not going to be good enough anymore. You know, uh, everybody's a manager in Nigeria and nobody's the workman. You're going to have to be manager and workman now. We're going to go back to basics if we have to sustain this economy. And that is the future of business in Nigeria. The illusion has ended. Reality has arrived. I think everything is a challenge in Nigeria. I'm sure you know that. Uh, it's, it's one thing to acquire the equipment. It's one thing to understand the processes. It's one thing to acquire the required labor. You're going to require maintenance. And then, of course, you know, you have to design sustainable processes. Everything is wrong in Nigeria. Um, there's an input that is tacit. There's an input that is explicit. Um, in terms of tacit, we require to, you know, Knowledge that is not easily transferable, the skills of tailoring, um, the skills of dyeing, you know, fabric, the skills of keeping colors strong and fast. We call it fast when uh, the fabric doesn't dissipate color quickly. Um, the, the extensive technologies that are transferred from generation to generation, we have problems with that because people do not practice anymore. We also have the explicit forms of education, the pattern making, uh, the tailoring strategies, the design strategies, which we learn in schools. The problem with Nigeria at the moment is that all these aspects of design are lacking. So 
we are challenged in every area. But like I said, I mean, these are challenges we, we need to take up if we want to remain in the industry. And taking up these challenges requires us to design processes and patterns and strategies to deal with the problems. And one of the major things we use to deal with the problems in the industry is what we call outsourcing. We outsource certain aspects of our design area to specialists on the outside. We supervise them and they deliver to us and then we finish off the product internally. Yeah, we have a Facebook page, we have, we have a website, www.thealternateculture.com. Um, Instagram is uh, The Alternate Culture also. Um, I think Facebook is also The Alternate Culture. Um, so I guess I'd, 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 I'd razzle everything together and give them to you, but basically that's, that's how we work. Ankara on throw pillows. That's new to me, so it's. I think it's a good idea. If you're going to cultivate the African culture in art, at least we should learn to do it our own way. There are other designs, the aesthetic, the aesthetic, and whatever they call those things. But if you're going to use Ankara on this type of things, then yeah, it's a go-go for me. It depends on. Uh uh, your choice and my choice, so I don't really see much about it. You know, uh, these days Ankara is being used for different kind of things. You see people using it to make bag and shoes and all that. So if people, if they are now using it to make throw pillow, I believe uh, uh, those that are using it to do that, maybe that is their choice. Well, I can say it's uh, fashionable from my perspective, you know. So it's fashionable, yeah, from my perspective. Yeah. It will be attractive to a lot of people. For example, people that love Ankara so much, maybe they, it will be attracted to them. But uh, to me, maybe a bit. Not that much. Uh, well, um, it's a trend. Um, it's something that is trending now, which I know that um, it's a fashion that will fade away in due time. You know, because um, when you look at it, everybody is turning their missing clothes to chair clothes. You understand? You know, at some point, you know how Nigerian people does. When everybody embraces, everybody try to do what everybody is doing. So when they will stop, all of them will stop at the same time. It's a big talent for anybody that be creative like that. Because to be a creativity for any job or any design, it's not easy because by this way, some people use Ankara to do cushion share. Some people use Adria to make it as a design. And some people use Ashoki to design. All these things beautify our culture in Nigeria. Okay guys, see my adrenaline level is still very much on the high side. I mean, I am so pumped to see that, I mean, African fabrics can be used to make designs like real 24th century nice designs that are so basic beautiful simple oh my god and they're nigerian they're african they are our own fabrics mixed with every other normal fabric that we see out there yeah and it's just stylish and mm, on point guys that is the end of today's show guys but good news you can meet me here on the same station at the same time 
and I'm going to take you on more interesting journeys. See y'all guys. Bye.